Why is it important to understand this? Because on the surface, it looks very clear cut, but underneath, there's going to be some ripple effects in a sense on the mindset of buyers. So let's go in depth from here. <music> Definitely, there's no free lunch. Happy, happy, happy. Definitely, there's no free lunch, right? So, plus... I think everybody has already heard the news about Standard Plus and Prime new BTO flats that will be introduced from 2024 onwards. And of course, we just want to break down what will be the possible impact to the current market. If this were to be introduced in 2024, what is going to happen uh, truly is that we will only see the real impact coming into about 14 years later, which is 2038 or 2037 thereabouts. And uh, we're going to break down for you in the simplified fashion what we think might happen. All right, so of course, the first one will be the new classification of HGB Town. So um, in the past, BTO flats were being allocated based on matured and non-matured estate. Of course, according to our PM, this framework does not work anymore because a lot of the towns has actually been developed into very beautiful township. For example, just take Pongo. It looks beautiful now. In fact, a lot of, um, if you go on the ground, a lot of our retirees, uh, not only young people love to stay in Pongo, uh, if you love the Northeast part, uh, a lot of retirees actually are coming from all parts of Singapore, even from Jurong to um, selling their property and then going to Pongo to retire. And uh, Pongo has become one of the hot spots for a lot of families, retirees, young couples as well because of the rate of development. And um, I think it's also because of that very beautiful um, connector park that links all the way towards the entire Pongo waterway that makes it so interesting. Now, um, it will then, of course, be classified um, without this classification. And also, this will be removed and uh, they will classify it just purely based on the type of flats, which is uh, plus prime or standard kind of properties. So as you notice, what is going to happen is like this. So if we were to look at the map and the classification, basically standard kind of BTOs will be the main kind of supply across the entire Singapore. In the sense that if we look at the next categorization plus, this is a new model, the description is that it's going to be choice locations within the regions and it could be near transport node or town center. So very clear cut, I think uh, all the near MRT plots in all townships will be plus property. So for example, even if you talk about Pongo or Sengkang, as long as it's near to the MRT station, it's near to transport node or even near to a very major shopping mall, it might most likely be a plus model. Anything that probably needs to take feeder bus away from the MRT station, they will be classified under standard. And um, the key jargon we want to focus on today for today's episode is that plus will be near MRT, standard, might not be near MRT, okay? And then, um, I, I, okay, so coming back to this, I think it's also very clear because uh, PM brought out the example of uh, Central with the one uh, that's oversubscribed 17 applicants to one property, the Amokyo latest BTO that's very good location near the MRT station, super oversubscribed. So I think from that hint, we're going to see that Plus will definitely be near to MRT station. Now Prime will be properties that is in the central region. So if you notice this map, uh, that's being published. There's no mention of Prime in other parts of Singapore. Basically, it will be the central region. And uh, it will be in the GSW, Greater Southern Waterfront. It will uh, so-called like be renamed from the uh, Prime Housing Scheme, which is a PLH model. So previously, we have been so used to PLH, PLH, right? Prime Housing Scheme. Now, it will just be called Prime. Now, based on this, uh, why is it important to understand this? Because on the surface, it looks very clear-cut. But underneath, there's going to be some um, ripple effects in a sense on the mindset of buyers. So let's go in depth from here. A few key things, just like I mentioned that plus, just need to remember is going to be near MRT station. Prime is central, standard is not near MRT station. Now I'm going to bring out my pants and then we're going to look at some of the key, uh, very interesting features here. So whenever we see this kind of news, what we want to understand firstly is that definitely there's no free lunch, right? So plus, you want to go near MRT station firstly, 
10 years MOP, all right? Second thing that is the most important one is that you cannot rent out the entire flat anymore, even after you fulfill MOP, all right? Third is that when you want to exit from your plus property, similarly to prime, this too has the same, uh, almost the same kind of um, restrictions after you hit MOP, after 10 years of stay, is that your next buyer, in terms of their combined income as a family, they cannot exceed 14,000. So this is the restriction. So there are three major restrictions. Number one, 10 years MOP. Number two, you cannot rent out the entire flat. You can only rent out the rooms. But take note, when it comes to HDB properties, if you want to rent out the rooms as room rental, you must stay in the property itself. If you don't stay in the property and there's an inspection, uh, you're flouting HDB rules, HDB has the right to repossess your home. Now, take note, room rental means that you're occupying the, uh, the place as a primary residence but rent out the rooms. Whole unit rental, can be done after you hit the MOP period for all types of resale HDB now and standard HDB BTO, but no longer allowed for the new version, plus and prime. You cannot rent the entire place. Now, with these three restrictions, let us look at some of the possible mindset shift on the ground that might happen next year. Okay, so we'll summarize it for you over here, but then we are going to look at a possible impact. So with this, I'm going to draw out some key things. Number one, let's look at, let's say if I'm um, a young couple, okay? You, let's say me and my spouse, me and my fiance, uh, we are planning, let's say example, to buy a BTO. With this right now, what's going to happen next year is that when we look at the choices in the market, um, you only have standard. So you have standard BTO. And very likely, this would not be near MRT, okay? So let's say if you want to go for Jurong, these, these locations will not be near MRT. You want the Jurong near MRT version, it has to be plus. Okay, so this is MRT. However, take note that this will be a four years if the construction goes well. Of course, during COVID, there were people that have waited for uh, six to seven years, but now um, government has, of course, done their best and they want to really put out the construction period to be around four years. And you need to stay for 10 years. Now, what is going to happen is that, for example, if let's say you are 30 years old now, 30, you apply. Once you get your keys, you are 34. By the time you can exit and sell, you are 44 years old. So you have completed a 14 years cycle, all right? Now for standard, it will be same four years construction and then five years. You hear MOP. And let's say if your plan when you first purchase the BTO is that you have already sort of discussed that, okay, hey, we are in our early 30s. This is going to be the next 15, 20 years going to be our highest earning power. And we're going to build our family, have kids, but we're going to um, a salary on our career, want to do well. And then maybe you have a plan that, okay, by the age that you hit, maybe um, 55, you want to slow down, right? Uh, most people, they will start to plan for retirement uh, kind of strategy for their real estate asset at about 50 years old because if you turn 55 and you only do your final move uh, after 55, what's going to happen is that there's going to be a certain amount that will be locked up in your retirement account, in your CPF, and you cannot utilize the full amount for an OA into your next property. So most people, they will do the move around 54 for their final primary residence. Now, that is just a side information, but uh, let's come back to this approach. Okay, so let's say you're a young couple that uh, has a plan that in future, after your first BTO, because uh, now maybe you are building up your income, uh, you don't have much down payment for a private property, and you don't want to go to resale because you want something that's brand new, and uh, maybe you're thinking that, okay, BTO, there's a higher chance to see appreciation. So what's going to happen is you, you also have this plan that... Um, your next property is going to be a private property. So if that's the plan, plan A, if you go for a standard kind of property, you're 30 years old, get your keys 34. By the time you sell, it's 39. You move into your new, let's say you upgraded to a condominium or maybe a landed property, it's going to be 40. Here, by the time you'll be 45. First impact is your tenor for your next home. 
because loan is based on 65, so here is 25 years of loan tenure. Of course, you can do refinance, stretch up to 75. That is another topic altogether. But here, the key impact is that by the time you enter into your property, you're 45, your loan tenure for your LO is about 20 years. So your money installment is definitely going to stretch up higher. All right. Take note that that's point number two is that your loan tenure will be affected. But point number three is that take note that you're losing these five years here. And these are opportunity costs. Because if this is an uptrend market, you could have entered into a private property market or landed market at age 40. In which year? Let's say now it's 2023. Nine years later, 2031, you move in in 2032, Okay, sorry. Uh, let me just recap this. Uh. Nine years later, it's going to be 2032. 10 years later, it's going to be 2033. So by the time you move in 2033, this is the part that if you went for Route A, you can go into a private property market in 2033. Just imagine if in the next five years from 2033 to 2038, the private mar market went into a bull run, example, you're going to be priced out in the sense that you lost these five years because you are in plan B. Okay? So that is the second or the third impact. Okay. Now let's come to plan C. Yeah? C is prime. So prime and plus is the same. All right? So we'll just stretch out to 14 years. And uh, what is the next level of thinking that might go through a young couple's mind is that First, my first um, so-called like, assumption is that if this young couple is a couple that wants to get into a BTO first because they want to build their income, they cannot get into a, a condo right now or cannot get landed right now because they're, they're still young and all that, building up their down payment. And that's all and fine. And they want to build a home to get married um, and settle down, have kids and all that. But they have a plan to go into a second property next time. So by the way, if you have not seen the episode that we have interviewed Javine and Joanne, um, basically there's a lot of families that have already have a cl very clear plan at the start phase. A similar like Joanne um, and Javin, just at the point of buying, they already plan next time when you hit MOP, they want to buy a prior, prior property because they want to have like a multiple property investment and they have already um, planned out that either they will have one HDB and one condo or they will sell off the HDB and have two condos. Now, is it possible to have one HDB and one condo? Yes. The only way to own one HDB and one condo, despite all the myths in the market, is that you have to go through this route first. You have to go through the HDB route, complete your MOP, then you buy your condo. How do you do it? Let me come to the second page for you. So I just subtract a little bit and I'll come back to plan A, plan B, and plan C again. First, you must fulfill your MOP. So the only way to own HDB and condo is to go HDB route first. So you must go HDB route, fulfill your MOP first, after that, you have two ways, okay? One way is you pay ABSD. One, a, one way is you don't need to pay ABSD. Now, let me just talk about the ABSD first. So firstly, to buy another private property and continue to hold on to this HDB, this is what we call a rental play because you want to accomplish one HDB plus one condo and why do we want to do that? Because HGB has the highest rental yield. You purchase a HGB, let's say a BTO, 600 over 1,000, your yield is going to be fantastic. And the rental yield is the highest. You will be able to use a rental to pay for the monthly installment here. Or let's say some people, they actually plan to fully pay off their HDB once it reaches MOP because maybe you have a lot of CPF and force saving and stuff like that. And... You can then use this rental to substantiate your, your condo's installment as well. That's how people plan for one HDB and one condo because the cost of maintenance of this HDB is very low. Rental is very high. Money installment is lower. All right? U is definitely better than a condo or a lender. So HDB has the best U. That's why a lot of people love to use HDB for a rental place situation. All right? Now, the usual route is that people, if you put in two names here as owners, you have to pay the ABSD for second property. So you pay ABSD, you bite the bullet. But their mindset is that I will use my rental for the next X number of years for my HDB to pay off myself the ABSD that I have paid for the second property condo. All right, that is their strategy. And of course, with that, you have to take on the next uh, point is that your loan to value for your condo loan. Because if you have not paid off your HDB, you cannot take 75% loan 
you can only take a 45% loan. So you need to take note of that. All right. So most people, when they go for this HDB and condo plan, they usually pay off their HDB and go for this. Now, there's a second way is that at the point of purchase of a HDB, you go for an owner plus occupier route. Now, owner plus occupier route, of course, if you do that, take note that in terms of the income eligibility and loan repayment and CPF payment usage, only the owner can use. So that's a disadvantage in the sense that if you don't have uh, enough income, and you want to substantiate this payment for the mortgage, you can always use one person income. But the advantage is that after five years of MOP, what's going to happen is that this occupier is treated as not owning the HDB because there's, it's just an occupier. And when this occupier go and buy a condo, there's no ABSD. And that's how you accomplish the one HDB and one, one condo kind of concept as well. So there's pros and cons for both methods. But take note that this ownership plus occupier rock can only be done at the start point of the purchase of the BTO or the resale HDB. All right. Now, if you want to do more in-depth one, of course, you can sign up for our consult session. That's where we sit down in-depth with you in our office, in PRB office, our senior consultants. We sit down, map out the entire uh, work map for you. Also, a little bit on advertisements of what's going to happen on the 15th of September is that we're going to have a live debate right here. Come to our PRB office. It's got PRB Ascent. We're located uh, near to Tai Seng MRT, Paleba region. Just come here. We have a lovely office, free Starbucks coffee on the house. Uh, you, uh, we, we're going to have like some small bites and stuff like that. But you're going to come here. We're going to have our live debate first round. We're going to have two teams that will debate uh, HDB. Uh, BTO versus HDB resale. And then the following two weeks later, on the 20 plus of September, what's going to happen is that uh, we're going to have a live debate with another team as well. And these are all my PRB consultants. They are going to take the position of condo versus lender. So if you're very keen to watch our live debate, join us on this first time live debate. Um, and of course, if you're not available to come up physically, you can also sign up the QR code for the live webinar for you to watch at home. So we're going to live cast that uh, for you. So it's going to be going to, I think it's going to be very fun. I'm going to be the moderator. We're going to have fun together. All right. So coming back to this, this plan basically is for you to accomplish that one HDB plus one condo kind of concept. Whether you want to pay ABSD or don't pay ABSD, remember to plan right from the start because a lot of people don't know this. Once you have put in your names, take note that let's say if you have purchased a HDB with two owners name, there's no more changes. You cannot change to occupy it anymore. All right. Let me come back. So where is my whiteboard? Boom. All right. Okay, nice. Love this screen, man. Okay. A, B, C. What will happen in the mind of a young couple that is contemplating A, B, or C kind of BTO next year is that, firstly, if they don't want to buy a car, they want to be a near MRT station, they only have one choice left, which is plus. But that's going to jeopardize their plan because this couple wants to have one HB and one condo. They want to use the HDB as a rental play, but now take note, they can't use this as rental play anymore. So plus and prime, you cannot accomplish the plan of one HDB and one condo in the sense that even if you bite the bullet and pay ABSD for your condo or you don't pay ABSD for your condo, you can't rent out the whole unit anymore. And please don't risk this by sort of like illegally renting out a unit because if you are being discovered by HDB, the consequences are very, very dire, all right? So uh, please just follow the HDB rulings, all right? So basically you can only do room rental. So there's no point that you go for a plus or prime flat if your intent is for like a expansionary route to own two properties. Of course, if you love the prime location, central location, you love the MRT location near to your parents' place in the same township, and you are not going to sell, you're very clear, then all good and fine. You can go for plus and prime. But if you're on an expansionary kind of plan and you want flexibility in future, then it will make sense to go for standard. However, because it's near, not near to the MRT, you might be thinking, hey, for the next five years here, it's going to be quite painful taking the feeder bus and taking grab and stuff. Then this young couple might start to explore D which is resale HDB. Why? And they will go for near MRT. So my own forecast is that from now towards the next 14 years, because take note, we're only going to see the impact of plus and prime in 2038, 2037, because prime started last year, 2022. Um, I add about 14, 15 years, about 2037. This started 20, 
uh, three, two, three. I add about 14, 15 is about 2038. So we're only gonna see the impact later on. So that's very far away. But what's gonna happen now until the next 14 is that couples that are thinking in this mindset as I, what I have just described is that they might then think about the resale HDB near to the MRT currently in the township that they like. Let's say they, they want Jurong, they want Pongo, they want Sengkang, they want Woodlands. They will hunt for those near MRT station because that is their main criteria to have an MRT version. And they will just buy, they just hit five years and they can go ahead and get another condo once they're ready. Of course, they can take five, six, seven years to save up the down payment for the next condo and stuff like that. Or they can sell and move to a condo or they can use the one HDB and one condo kind of strategy, whether to pay ABSD and LTV kind of stuff that I just talked about just now. So this will then work. Why? Because this model, since the mindset is that you are going to rent out the whole unit anyway as a rental play, then whether is it a brand new BTO or a resale, it doesn't matter anymore because you are not going to sell. So this category of, of owners, they have this few key mindsets. Let me share again, what is that key mindset? Huh? Firstly, the first mindset is that they are not going to sell the HDB. Why? Because they are using it as a dividend rental play. Secondly, they want to accomplish one HDB and one condo. And since they want to accomplish this and use this for rental play, even if they go for a resale that has a balance of 85 or 75 years, it doesn't matter because it still has 75 years, 85 years to go. They can just continue to rent out. Why? Because it's near to the MRT. So this is the type of um, demographics that I think will spill over into the resale HDB route hunting for properties near the MRT station. And I think this will then create a fresh demand for properties right now. They are near to MRT station. And of course, the grants are created in the sense to be different. So what do I mean by this? Basically, why are the grants different? Just have a look at the BTO grants versus the resale grants. Resale grants easily, 100,000, 100 and uh, I think 20,000. And I'm not even talking about the enhanced. I'm just talking about family grant, near family grant, first timer. Easily you can get 100 to 120 if you go for a four room, if you go for a five room, slightly lesser, but it's also a substantial amount. And the mindset is that because of the grant, if you go for a HDB resale, you pay something at about 650,000 example. You go for a fresh MOP, four room, near MRT example in Singkang, all right? 650,000, you get a 100,000 grant. Technically, your price is only 550,000. And of course, all these MOP properties, you have not watched our world, Nuggets on a Good Discussion. There was an episode uh, with Rio and Linda. We talked about this fact that a lot of the MOP, just five years, their renovation is only five years old. You got to get renovation that is five years old, that is very new modern renovation, and you don't have to worry about investing cash on the renovation. So you can just take the property as it is, maybe just spend two, three thousand dollars to paint, bring your furniture, maybe spend another 10, 20 K on furniture, and then you're good to go. So your total cost, maybe just plus another 25 K, five, seven, five K, you're good to go. Now, the logic is that five years later, since you are not going to sell, you just need to rent it out. And let's say the rental right now is, uh, I mean, easily people are asking for about 4,000. I mean, just a hypothetical example, but that's the, around the rough rate right now. Then, of course, you, if you just divide in terms of gross yield, how do you calculate gross yield? 4 times 12, 48K, just divided by your flat price, 5, 5, 0. If you want to even divide by 5, 7, 5 is up to you, no problem. Because why this 100K is given to you as a grant, and once it's given to you, the misconception on the ground is that you have to return it. You don't have to return it. It's, it's, it's inserted into your OA account, you and your spouse. You don't have to return it. You only need to return what we call the, the, the levy. And that is called the resale levy. If you go for a second property, but you want to buy another subsidized property. Let's say you want to go for like a, a BTO, but you have taken grant here you need to return the levy based on the flat type that you have here, all right? But if you're not going to go for a subsidized one, you're forever going to a resale HDB all the way, 
or after owning this, you just go for add on one more condo. This is yours to keep. And the rental is fantastic. You keep this HGB. It's a defense strategy. We call it rental play strategy. And this kind of strategy is very, very prudent because you keep a HDB, you own a condo, you move into a condo, you rent out this, let your kids enjoy the facilities, enjoy the appreciation of the condo as well. This one, whether you appreciate or don't appreciate, it doesn't matter. You're just keeping it as like a defense mechanism. All right. So that's for today's topic. And uh, with that, I hope that you enjoy this session where we take a uh, standard plus and prime and look at some of the possible ripples in the resale market. And of course, through this, uh, it's basically to share with you like this key strategy about one HDB plus one condo. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode with uh, me and Douglas on the go. I hope to see you on the next one. And of course, do enjoy our banter series. And uh, if you have any comments, uh, anything that you want to answer, anything you want to learn about real estate, just pump in the comments below. I'll be very happy to answer. If you My name is Melvin Lim. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care. For example, Hongdo has in recent years been a very popular place for... Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna stay here. Hey, then just now, need to cut out. Okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs>